Hey there everyone! Today's video is going to be filmed in my bedroom and it's changed a bit since I last filmed in here but it's going to change a bit more between now and when I do my room tour. Um, this side shouldn't be changing that much but you know, who knows. Anyway, this video is going to be my advice for newcomers to goth. It's probably my most asked question um, besides what my heritage is. I don't know why my heritage is even more popular, but this is the second most popular question. So, starting off, what is goth? The term goth was initially coined, I think, in the third century. It was a group of Germanic people who, um, not sure if they invaded the Roman Empire. It had something to do with that. I'm not 100% sure. I probably should have looked it up before this, but that's not really the concern of this video. Um, the next time the phrase kind of um, resurfaced was through, I think, the 1200s. Um, it was to describe a period of architecture and a period of art. The characters depicted within the paintings before the Gothic art period were very 2D and not exactly realistic. The Gothic art period focused more on realism and also the architecture was all about very heavy detailing, um, filigree, all kinds of different um, design motifs and do design aesthetics and it all centered around the Christian church because most of the grand buildings and things that were being created were for the church and churches themselves. And then Gothic literature popped up in, I think, the 17th century, 17th or 18th century. So it popped up every now and then. But the contemporary What is Goth is a subculture that popped off from post-punk in the 80s. And all these little bits and pieces of goth, except for maybe the 3rd century goths, is what brings me into the next part of this video, which is inspiration and style. When you really think about it, there are no two goths alike, And when you really get down to the nitty gritty. Um, a lot of outsiders may think that all goths look alike, but in reality it's not really the case when you sit there and look um, style aesthetics and um, the way that everybody changes their outfits from day to day. Certain people stick within certain styles because that's what they like. Um, I'm th one of those people who likes to flit around from genre to genre, but I generally like to have at least some kind of Victorian aspect to it um, because that's my favorite period of fashion. Two other people who I feel are similar to me with the fact they like to flit around to different styles is the Gothic Alice and the Goblin Queen or Alison. Um, they both have amazing styles and they change day to day and I feel like they are both really good for um, newcomers, I guess, to see a variety of different styles. I try to offer that, but I do get limited in the way of I don't like to show much of my body and also I have to wear like mother appropriate outfits a lot. Um, I do a lot of photo shoots and again that creates more unrealistic outfit kind of um, aesthetics. So. Those two are the people I would recommend for a very large variation of outfit. Um, if you watch my lookbooks, I do vary quite a bit, but not as much as um, the Gothic Alice and the Goblin Queen. My only advice, um, well, there's two bits of advice. The first is wear what makes you happy and what makes you comfortable. Don't allow what other people think about everything to influence what you want to wear. Um, the second is, when you're new to it, it can be quite um, intimidating socially to full-on wear something like a massive morning gown or something, if that's what you wanted to wear. When I was younger, I eased into it um, because it allowed people around me to adjust and also myself to adjust to being stared at because that is inevitable. There is always going to be someone who is going to look at you and look at you. And it does make me uncomfortable still, but I'm learning to block them out and just keep walking. Because in reality, 
it doesn't matter. It's not like their judgment that's going on in their head is going to affect you. And if they do voice their judgment on you, it just proves what an asshole they are. It does make you feel uncomfortable, and I still get it. But when you really think about it, it just proves what an asshole they are and how <laughs> how they've got a really shitty personality. Speaking about assholes before, I wanted to lightly touch on the negative views and stereotypes perpetuated within pop culture and media. Goths are not really seen as anything good in media, particularly crime shows for some reason. They are the worst perpetrators of this. I cannot watch like show, I love crime shows, but I cannot watch things like Deadly Women because if someone who even remotely just dressed in black, um, they are uh, instantly called a goth. They worship Satan and the gothic subculture drove them to murder and it just, it really grinds my gears when they do that because it's just, it is so far from reality, it's ridiculous. I mean, I guess there are people who are goth and are very interested in murder and I, I bet there are goth murderers out there, but it really, these shows, if you watch them and their wording, it makes everybody look like they have murderous tendencies or um, sadistic fantasies and yeah, it's just not good. But also I've noticed in the last five years or so that um, Hollywood also does this, that the goth chick is always the one that's into um, whipping people and burning people and all that stuff. So it doesn't really help, but um, that's pop culture media for you. So the reason why I bring all of this up is because ultimately I would like to alter these popular perceptions because I don't care the fact that they are so blatantly wrong because a lot of popular perceptions are, but I hate the fact that there are people who seem to act on this and not understand that it is a media perpetuation. It's a media problem. Um, so you can't really blame, you know, the 60 year olds who think that because you dress in black you immediately sacrifice a lamb on an upside down cross um, saying hail Satan. Um, oh, funny thing about the upside down cross, it is actually a Christian symbol. It was not actually, it was not associated with Satanism until I think the mid 20th century. It was the cross of St. Peter before that. Also the pentagram or the pentacles, again, not a satanic symbol until it was taken in around the, the beginning of the 20th century. It was associated with paganism and also even before that it was associated with Christianity representing the five wounds of Christ. So anyway, continuing, I aim to make not only my experience but others' experience of the gothic subculture and within the gothic subculture a positive one because it's, I, I'm trying to eventually, I know that it's like an uphill battle, but I'm trying to change the perceptions of the masses, I guess. How do you do this? Well, I try and be as nice as possible. Um, I don't want to give in to stereotypes. I mean, that's the whole reason I made the um, Ungoth Confessions video and the reason why I think it is a really good um, tag to do. There are some people who actually criticized me for making that video because, um, well, not only me, but other people because they said that it was perpetuating the stereotypes, but I feel very differently about that. And also the fact that I want to create a positive experience for not only me, but other people who are even slightly in interested in the subculture. Um, because who the hell doesn't want to experience positivity? You know, despite again, what popular culture and popular media likes us to believe, um, goth isn't about being a sad and macabre person. Um, 99% of the people I know are quite happy. Two quick points before I end this video because I have been bantering for far too long already. The first is remain true to yourself and your personal preferences, your opinions, what you like. Be open to learning though because you change, you, you're like a butterfly I guess, going through a metamorphosis but we never leave the metamorphic stage, um, I guess until death. 
there are so many people within the subculture who love all these different things and they draw inspiration and style from different areas. It's what helps the subculture to progress. Um, also, the fact that it creates even more diversity. The last point is something that should be very obvious, but you know, every now and then you come across someone who um, is, again, another asshole. Goth does not discriminate. You don't have to be tall, short, thin, whatever. Um, you don't have to be white. You don't have to be any race, any skin color, any size, anything. Goth is whatever you make it. Literally, what you make it. There is no rights or wrongs within it. There is no right or wrong. And people who say there is, I don't even want to get started on them because I could go on for days about those kind of people. Bottom line is, if you want to identify as goth, you can. It's not some exclusive club, you don't get a golf card, um, you don't get golf points, although a lot of people like to um, joke about it. There are some people who actually take it a little bit too seriously, but there's no such thing, there's no golf card, nothing. If you want to identify as that, you can. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this was somewhat informative to those of you who are relatively new to goth, want to know more about it, or are really interested in identifying as goth. And right now there are helicopters going up overhead. Um, there have been a few bushfires near where I am, so there's constant helicopters going back and forth. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it informative. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because I'd love to be here for every single video. Like this video if you found it somewhat helpful or insightful. Comment down below if there's something you'd like to see on this channel, and I hope you all have a fantabulous day.